you for taking the time to click on this video. I promise you I will throw all my energy into this subject to help you get to grips with it. I have many years of experience and like to keep up to date with research and developments. I am more than happy to answer any questions that you wish to post. All I ask in return is for one minute of your time to like and share, or maybe even subscribe, as this makes a huge difference to me to be able to put these videos together. Again, thank you and enjoy. So let's start with a piece of trunking. This is 50 by 50 steel trunking, and we're going to do an internal 90 degree bend, which is the easiest. And it's we're going to go for 100 mil from end to back of bend. Like I say, this is one of the easiest ones to do. So we're going to square this around using our square. Hopefully your square is half decent. Maybe in better condition than my one. And you can tell if a square is not completely square, because if, if you go all the way around and it doesn't meet up, then that, that's one indication that it's not actually very square at all. So on this version, what I'm going to use is I'm going to use an angle grinder. So then we're going to do a 45 degree, so using your set square, do 45, and one on each side of that centre point, which is your 100mm back of bend mark it's an equilateral we're looking for whatever the trunking width is we can measure that and it should be 50 mil by the time it does up goes along there so if you haven't got a 45 degree angle you can just measure the width and then measure it across and draw the diagonal so there's that side to make sure we're going in the right direction and then repeat on the opposite side like i say i'm going to use an angle grinder on this one normally if i was doing it for students and showing them what I would use is a hacksaw or not an angle grinder for obvious reasons. I want to keep my fingers and just the yeah, um, pure health and safety of it. But I thought I would give it a go with an angle grinder. And there we have it, and then we're going to mark out just to make sure that we know what we're going to cut out. So one side only, doesn't matter which side, but all of the top, that top lip has got to come out is in its entirety. Like I say, just mark it out just so you know, and then you're consistent in your cutting. Having done that, we're going to use the angle grinder. So using appropriate PPE, obviously. Um, it wasn't the best thing in the world to try and do with the camera directly above and trying to have that in place which obstructed me so I've got it my knee off of shot trying to hold that in place with a bit of care well, that's a one mil thick blade we're using on this one I'm going to cut those triangles out making sure we don't cut through the back And then we've got to remove those top lips, and I'm going to be cutting down at an angle. Because if you don't cut down at an angle, you cut down a square. Not that we're taking a lot out, but it, you can end up with a, basically a, a, a hole when you put it together. So if we look as if we're going to cut it at an angle, but literally just take that edge out and then turn it on its side and then cut along that edge. So literally just that lip. Yes, people file them, but I don't bother filing. I'd use a hacksaw or even at any other time. I'd never bother filing these out take forever. And that removes that, so you're basically left, you've taken out four pieces of metal. They're hot. There's three and the fourth one inside there. And obviously the point of a containment system is to protect cables, so make sure you remove the burrs. So we're going to just remove these burrs off of here, and let's just speed this up a little bit. Let's see how much this, you get the idea, but make sure all the burrs are removed, and then run your fingers over once you're finished. If your fingers draw blood, then that's obviously a sign that it was a little bit too sharp, so just make sure you remove them all. Once you're happy with that, it's a case of you need to check it, and then... Ultimately, we're going to look to bend it into place. 
So just nip them in so they go one inside the other. So we're leaving the cuss edge on the outside. So it looks like a mitre joint and they should all tie up like that. And if I then hold that roughly in that position and I'll just get the square now just to show you that that is actually 90. And obviously you need to make sure you drill the holes so they're at 90. And that measurement from that back to the end will be 100 mil. So let's put a couple of holes in here. Again, let's just see if we can speed this up a bit. Don't sit and watch drilling a hole. I think you generally get the gist of drilling holes. All the way through, repeat on the opposite side. Want to be consistent. Making sure you go through both bits of metal. Fire them out just very briefly. And then put a couple of nuts and bolts in there. Now I've always put the head of the nut on the head of the bolt on the inside and then put the nut on the outside. Could go around the other way providing the nuts are just long enough and these are just long enough because they're the trunking nuts and bolts. So these are M5s so with an 8mm spanner we can do that up and if we measure that then that is your 100mm. And there we have it. This is Sparky Help. Thank you very much.